November 1940, an historic moment in engineering history. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster in the USA changed the way we think about building large structures. Ever since, engineers have tried to avoid a phenomenon called vortex-induced oscillation, which is what destroyed the bridge. But what if instead that oscillation could be harnessed and turned into a source of renewable energy? I'm Guy Henderson in Madrid, Spain, where decades of engineering norms are being turned upside down to create a structure that's designed to shake. Modern life is built around consuming energy, but much of it comes from fossil fuels, and that is unsustainable. Take a short drive outside the capital, and it's clear that wind power is a big part of the solution. Spain is one of Europe's leading producers of wind energy. Burns like these do also have their limitations. You can hear they're pretty noisy for starters. They take up a lot of space, so that means they're not necessarily suitable for densely populated areas. Uh, plus, there's a lot of moving parts, and that means a lot of maintenance. Hello. Hello. How are you? Very Welcome. good to meet you. David Yanez runs a company called Vortex Bladeless and believes he's found a new way to harness the wind's energy while avoiding these shortfalls. This is called a Vortex Bladeless. Yes, yes. In fact, we have something like a one blade. It's a hollow tube, a vertical mast. We oscillate with the wind with the resonant. When two frequencies, the vortexes and the natural frequency of the structure start to move, uh, we have to a way to collect energy from the wind, to transmit energy from the fluid to the structure. So it oscillates in the wind to create energy. Exactly. Is it complicated or is, I mean, how many moving parts do we have inside? Yes, we have no moving parts. We have no shafts, gear, bearings. What we have is a carbon fiber rod that uh, absorbs the, the flexion okay, and nothing else. What we are trying to do is to develop a new technology, a new tool that maintains similar characteristics that, than the solar panels. For example, not to produce noise, reduce the, the visual impact, to avoid uh, maintenance as far as possible. José Vieira is a Vortex engineer back at headquarters in Madrid. So, José, why are you showing me this ruler? <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, this is a, a good way to understand the natural frequency of uh, any structure. This uh, oscillates uh, corresponding to its mechanical uh, characteristics, its length, its uh, strength, and everything. So we base uh, our technology in the natural frequency oscillation of, in our case, a rod of carbon fiber. The easiest way to understand how the vortices uh, are created around, uh, in our case, a cylinder or any bluff body uh, is this, for example, this video. The wind comes in this direction. The wind produces a physical phenomena here in which the pressure is high and low in both sizes alternatively. So at the end, vortices are produced and these forces produce the movement of the roller. Okay, so in an area of low pressure, mm -hmm. that would draw the object back towards that area of low pressure. Okay, yeah, okay. that's correct. If the natural frequency of the device or the ruler and the natural frequency of the vortices are the same, it, it self-sustains. Here we have the wind tunnel. You can just see it's completely made from wood. Prototypes are tested in this wind tunnel downstairs. We've seen the headlines out in the field. What exactly is happening here? What's happening here is a physical phenomena called vortex shedding or vortex street effect. It's a phenomena that happens when a fluid, in this case the wind, passes through or around a slender structure. It's a, it's a phenomena that you can usually see on flaps, on chimneys, also well in aeronautics. It's a very well, it's well known, but everybody is trying to avoid it because it causes some turbulences on the planes or whatever, and it can make uh, the buildings collapse, like Tacoma Narrows Bridge. 
nobody has investigated how to enhance this, this process or how to absorb the much amounts of energy from, from the wind from this way. You really are the pioneers, really, of this. No one else has really been yeah, doing this. Yeah, like this is a state of the art. This is uh, completely new in, in everything. All the patents are new, all the investigation, all the papers. It's, uh, it's a completely new line of investigation, yeah. So. Inside, the key component. The whole one is, is very, very light. Very simple science here, yeah. but you have an alternator in here. I know you're a bit sensitive about us getting too close to it because it's prized technology, right? Yeah. Um, but what, in very simple terms, what, what does the alternator do? What's that in there? Why is that Well, an, an alternator, as, a, as, a, as any other alternator, it, it converts movement to electricity. A standard alternator is basically a magnet that rotates inside a coil of copper wire. Movement of the magnetic field relative to the coil generates electricity. So in a car, for example, the engine spins the alternator, generating power to charge batteries and drive the electrics. The vortex alternator is a little different. In our case, the movement is not, is not a spin, it's like a spherical movement. So we needed to develop a new kind of alternator. And that's another thing that has not really been done before. No. The alternator is driven by a carbon fibre rod inside the cone. Comius Pontifical University is where these rods are tested. Here scientists test all kinds of material to their limit, including graphene. Uh, this material is made from a liquid polymer, which is a plastic, really. We mix it with graphene and we have this this uh, dispersion of graphene on the polymer. Afterwards, we mix it with carbon fiber and we end up hardening the material in order to get this plastic composite. A plastic composite, and the question, of course, is, is this going to be strong enough for the task of oscillation? The sample is placed into a special machine that stretches it. Graphene can normally withstand such pressure. You can see the load, the strength. OK, okay so it's pulling it. Specimen. We're pulling the sample. So basically what we check in is how much does the material stand the force we're applying. But the graphene would stretch a little bit? The whole material, the polymeric matrix, as well as the fibres, are stretching till some point. Yeah. <laughs> It did break. Yes. Did it break? <laughs> it broke. It broke. <laughs> <laughs> it's failed. <laughs> ah. well, this isn't how it was supposed to go. Good, good. We, we didn't bet. Wow. There we go. A surprise for us. Because the, the fiber is okay. in this direction. OK, yeah. so it has broken here. There is a crack. It, it is. Okay. Just in the, in the clamps. So it is breakable. We've established that. Mm -hmm. But it's still very strong. Right? It's very strong. And yeah. very, very strong. Uh, flexible, as in it can survive mm -hmm. the oscillation. It is much more strong uh, than what is needed for the application. OK. Your specialty is graphene. Yeah. OK. And how long has this been produced? 10 years or okay. so. So it's quite yeah. a new material. It's, it's a new material, yeah. Okay. It's a new material. Okay. It was actually... Uh, a Nobel Prize was won because of the discovery of the material. And so uh, from then uh, till today, uh, they've been trying to use this material in different applications because the material itself has really nice um, properties, for, you know, mechanical and electrical properties that can be, uh, can be used for, for different applications and different products. The hope is to roll out the Vortex bladeless in cities. At less than three metres tall, they'd fit on a small roof, even an apartment balcony. The dream, though, is scaling up, so that one day, wind farms like these can be bladeless. <laughs>